Hey guys, let's talk about uh, normal thyroid levels or when your doctor tells you that your labs are fine and, uh, and how stress affects your thyroid. Those are two main topics I want to talk about. Uh, first of all, my name is Dr. Philip Oob. I'm a functional medicine doctor uh, in Austin, Texas, and I'm going to talk about thyroid dysfunction. So one of the big things I talk about with all of my patients is thyroid levels, and I always fully evaluate all of my new patients and um, even my regular established patients. I'm checking a full thyroid panel on them. And the reason why is because life changes. So just like myself, my thyroid was very normal a year ago, and uh, with opening the practice and doing ER shifts and stuff, I actually kind of fatigued out my adrenals and made my thyroid worse. And if I weren't doing my advanced thyroid labs, I wouldn't have even picked up on that. And so it was a kind of reminder to me. So I want to help you understand what your thyroid levels mean, what are some of the levels I aim for and most of my patients, so that maybe you can take a critical eye to your own labs and maybe even ask your own doctor, um, how do I, can you order these labs so I can kind of assess where my thyroid is at, even if you don't want to really support treating it. So first of all, let's talk about how the thyroid works and then you'll understand how your labs work. So your thyroid is in your neck. Most people know that. It's a butterfly-shaped organ right around here. And um, it's regulated by your brain. Your brain regulates everything. You probably know that already. So your brain releases a hormone called TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. Pretty simple name. And the whole point of that is when the brain wants more thyroid hormone, it goes down, it, it releases TSH, and this TSH goes to the thyroid and says, hey, the brain wants more thyroid, snap to, make some more thyroid, let's see it, put some out in circulation. The thyroid starts generating T4. That's the primary output of the thyroid gland. Now, technically, it releases a little T3, but for this purpose, let's just say it mainly releases T4. And so this T4 goes out in the circulation, and it's just roaming the blood vessels, but it's more like uh, money in the bank, okay? The T4 is just money sitting in the bank. You don't really have access to it, and there's no debit card in this picture. Uh, we're only talking about cash in hand. So the T4 is roaming the circulation, and the body actually has to convert that T4 into T3, the active product that actually does stuff and is, is active, uh, stimulates metabolism, hair growth, all the other good things that, that the thyroid does. So um, the, the organs that do that can, is really any organ to, can do it, but primarily the, the liver, the kidneys, the lungs all convert to T4 to T3. So in times of stress, the body actually stops converting T4 into T3, and then what happens is it actually starts making something called reverse T3, and reverse T3 does the opposite of real T3. Uh, reverse T3 tells the system to slow down, um, decrease the metabolism, decrease hair growth, constipation, um, depression, just general slows it down. And the reason why is this is a defense mechanism. So when our bodies are stressed, that tells us that something's not going right and we need to prepare for the worst, start storing calories, build everything up um, because we, we don't know how long this famine or stress might go on and we don't know when we might need these stores. So as you stress, your reverse T3 levels start to rise and T4 can only be turned into one of those two things. It can either be turned into real T3 or reverse T3 and stressors force it towards the reverse T3. So if you're making more reverse T3, you probably figured it out, you're going into this hibernation state, not fun because none of us really hibernate, although we might want to, but once you go into this hibernation state, you just feel sluggish and tired and disgusting and uh, nothing's working right and you're just drained. But what we need to do is we need to get that reverse T3 uh, metabolized, gone, and we need to make the T4 turn into the, the real T3, the active ingredient. So how do we do that? We change the perception of stressors. Um, we get the body, instead of going from T4 into reverse T3 through stress, we manage the perception of stress, we decrease the stressors, and the body can start making the real T3. There are other micronutrients and things that affect that conversion. The big ones that are known as selenium and zinc, they both um, aid in the conversion of T4 into T3. So if you're having any thyroid difficulties, you want to make sure that you're adding selenium and zinc. The other big one is fish oil, vitamin D. Those help with the conversion, uh, loosening your, your cellular membrane so that they can communicate. Hormones are not really drugs, so they don't really go, in, go into the system and force something. They trigger a receptor in the cell membrane, which then carries out uh, other functions. So if your cell membranes are stiff because there's not an fish oil in it, then even the, if the T3 lands on the receptor, the receptor may not be able to respond as it needs to because there's not enough omega-3s or fish oils in the, in the cellular membrane. So that's the basics of how your brain um, gets more thyroid into the system. So the brain releases TSH, goes to the thyroid, the thyroid makes T4, and then the T4 has to be converted to T3 in order to do stuff. 
the, the other metaphor I like to say is, um, so T3 is cash in your hand. Another one I like to use is, um, if you're in a car, uh, if your gas light comes on, that's like your TSA saying, hey, stop, you need to go get some more gas. Once you uh, pull into the gas station, you put gas into your car, that's like the T4. Um, and then as you're going down the road, the car actually converts the, the gasoline into rocket fuel and then you can really go down the car or nitrous, whatever you want to use. So that's kind of the metaphor I like to use for TSH is the gas light, T4 is gas in the car, and T3 is really active gasoline or rocket fuel. And so we want more T3 and many people feel low thyroid symptoms and their doctors tell them that their labs are fine, your TSH is fine, but they didn't really even check the T4 and T3. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit about what levels you want in your thyroid levels. So the TSH, you're aiming for between 1 and 2. Um, I use the range kind of 0.5 to 2.5, but um, depending on symptoms, I'll squeeze that range down and, and fluctuate it based on where the patient is at, where you're at. Um, and so my basic range is 0.5 to 2.5. For free T4, don't check total T4. That's, that's totally useless. Remember that. Free T4 and free T3 are the only ones to be checking as far as the active thyroid hormones. So for free T4, we want that over 1.0 or over 1.1. Um, that's how much gasoline is in the car or how much cash is in the bank. And then the T3, we want free T3, remember. The free T3, we want over about 3.2. Um, there's some labs that report in a completely different range, um, so if that number seems completely off, you got to do some conversions to get it into the same range. But anyway, most labs reported um, that way, and so you're looking for over 3.2. If you are lower than 3.2, then chances are you're adrenally dysfunctioned or adrenally fatigued, and you've got stress imbalances, micronutrient imbalances, and really you should be looking at some of my adrenal videos, fixing your diet, fixing your health, repairing your gut and inflammation in order to boost more T3. But another thing we can use is um, desiccated thyroid, which is pig thyroid or cytomel uh, to boost the T3 levels, but I'll save that for another video. So the reverse T3, I really wanna see below 18, preferably below 15. Obviously kind of the lower that is, the better and says that the body's not as stressed as, um, uh, or not stressed and we're not worried about it. Um, so you want to make sure to keep those reverse T3 levels low, the free T4 over 1.0, the free T3 over 3.2, and that's the sign of a good thyroid. If any of those numbers are off, then they really should be uh, adjusted if you're feeling symptoms. So if you've ever looked up the symptoms for low thyroid, you can really say anything and, and it's lumped into the thyroid. And um, you can even get mixed symptoms. Some people lose weight with hypothyroid or low thyroid, um, but most people gain weight with hypothyroid. So if you're struggling to get your, your life back into balance, your energy restored, um, if you're having constipation, depression, slow uh, thinking or brain fog, uh, mood disturbances, make sure you're getting your thyroid fully evaluated and um, asking your doctor to run those additional tests that I just mentioned. And of course, don't forget the autoimmune antibodies, the Hashimoto antibodies, the antithyroid peroxidase and antithyroid globulin. Um, and if you're hyperthyroid, that's kind of a completely different story. Um, that's the Graves antibody and that will be for another video. So anyway, I hope this helps you understand your thyroid a little bit better and maybe how to uh, identify what, what is a deficiency or is your thyroid suboptimal. And if you're not getting much help from your doctor, seek out a functional medicine doctor. You're welcome to contact my office. Um, but hopefully this helps you optimize your thyroid.